there it is. We're here. We're live on Facebook. <laughs> Welcome. I'd like to get where I can see it too, though. <laughs> here we go. I can at least, at least see you now. <laughs> Welcome in. Welcome in, everyone. I'm here with special guest, Jean Berry. And she is the Game Inventor Mentor. And I'm just so happy to have you here, Jean. Welcome I'm in. I'm excited to come. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me inside of your community. And this is, I like having fun and you're fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So everyone, I'm sorry that we started just a little later. Dusty is here and we're using a new to me technology so Jean had to kind of run me through that but I am so excited to have my special guest here today Jean loves helping others have fun <laughs> lots of fun and making money so as an inventor and a game development coach, an international speaker, and an intuitive artist. She's an accountant and a spiritual guide. So she's uniquely gifted, really, in helping others and coaching and speaking. And she helps thought leaders just create unique transformation. So when we're looking about developing the unique you, you know how I always talk about that? Your you-ness. Anyway, Jean Berry is an expert at having you bring out your you-ness. And I love how Jean says that, um, I love how she says that she just wanted to have fun, just wants to have fun. <laughs> So welcome to Dar's Divine Connections, Jean, and I love your title, Game Inventor Mentor. So could you talk to us a little bit about where that came from and how you got started? Absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of funny when I... <laughs> <laughs> when I started calling myself that, it always makes me laugh myself. And so every time you say, I'm like, well, that's a good place to start the day. <laughs> Who are you in the world? And so, of course, my journey started as many entrepreneurs do, doing all kinds of different things, trying to find my space and my way. Um, I was, I became a coach first and I was doing a lot of creativity coaching and life passion, how to find your passion kind of coaching, those kind of things. And I, I invented a game because I discovered that most people can hear the calling. They can hear what they're supposed to be doing in the world. They feel it in their hearts. They know that. But I find that most people, even after they've heard it, and even if they hear it really, really clearly, they have a hard time taking action on it. And that's meaningful and actually moves them down the road. And so I invented a game called Angels, Peacocks, and Butterflies, 100 Days of Miracles. And it's a game that is for listening to your intuition and getting in action. And when I invented that game, I still thought it was kind of a fluffy thing, right? You know, you, we're supposed to work hard in the world, right? <laughs> and... I, I didn't put it out in the world right away and quite a few years passed and I was putting up one more webinar, one more thing to, you know, to how to make money and miracles in your business, I think was the title of the webinar I was doing. <laughs> and I, I had a coach I was working with and she said, you know, um, we're, you know, you need to come up with your unique thing and, you know, all these things. And finally, at one point I said, you know what, I just can't do it. I just want to have more fun than this. This is not fun. And she said, okay, as any good coach would, what do you want to do? <laughs> and I said, I just want to play a game. And she kind of laughed at the time and said, well, okay. <laughs> but I said, actually, I invented one. Would you like to hear about it? And I played the game with her and she's like, oh, this is really amazing. And at that point, I made the decision to shut basically down everything I had been doing and 
spent a year trying to figure out, well, how do you produce a game? How do you test it? How do you put it in the market? How do you do all those things? And I ended up doing a um, a hundred days of miracles because that's what it is <laughs> a program to launch that game and i put 40 people in my business who were brand new and excited about those kind of things and my, it launched my business and what happened after that of course is coaches started coming to me and saying i want what you have how do we how do i have a unique game inside of my business and that's how i became the engamenator <laughs> I love that. I love that story when she tells it. And I like how she just tells her coach, I just want to have fun. <laughs> how to play a game. I love it how you do that. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. So let's jump in and have, um, let me just get rid of a housekeeping thing. Be sure to put your questions in comments and i'll be looking at those that's what i was busy looking down for was i was finding out um how to find comments so now like i said it's a new technology to me so now i see your comments coming in thank you very much welcome jacqueline and edith and janet and donna and others as you come on be sure to post your questions um, Jean will be able to answer those later because that's part of the fun, right, Jean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us about some of the custom games that your clients have created. I just think that's so, so interesting. Awesome. Well, you know, it's it's really interesting because I think in business, we we tend to think it's supposed to be hard. We think that it's you're supposed to do a lot of work to make a business successful or to even your life successful or any of those kind of things. And so a lot of the people that I've helped make games sometimes have businesses that seem kind of hard and heavy and they wanted some way to lighten it up a little bit. One of the games I helped create um, was actually a licensed game called Soul Adventure. And the woman who um, invented that game, Lori Appleby, she is a forgiveness coach. And so a lot of times she found that forgiveness was really a hard and heavy thing that they were, you know, something you're working through and you're, you're coming up with old hard things that <laughs> showed up in your life and that you've suffered with much of your life. And she wanted a way to lighten it up. And the game Soul Adventure is, is a self-love game. It is a game about finding how you can love yourself more deeply so that then you can get to this forgiveness place. And so she finds it as a re precursor to her business and her coaching. It is a great thing for people to step into so that they can, it, because it's all about love. The whole world is about love, isn't it? <laughs> and if we can up the love somewhere in a fun way, that's a good thing. <laughs> And I helped another lady make a, a game. She's actually a productivity expert, which is kind of interesting. And she invented a game called Path. Her name is Karen Fritz. And the Path game is a game where there are tiles that make the board. And so you, there's mountains, rivers, and forests. You move through each one of them to find actually what your next tasks are. And it's a really cool, interesting game of self-discovery that also has animal guides and all kinds of cool things in it and so these kind of games are truly transformational and they help grow a coaching business or a um, service business and that kind of thing and so what i love about games is they're not just about you know adding a product to the business they're about creating the heart of your business so that it can grow Creating the heart of your business. I like that. Yeah. Well, I find that putting a game at the heart of the business is basically helps you scale it. And what I mean by that is I mentioned when I made my game, what it does is it opens intuition and it helps you get an action on it. The truth is there is nothing inside of my business that I do besides that. We create all of our games by listening to intuition and getting an action. That's all we do. And so this game, by illustrating what I do, people understand it. 
because I can say, well, we're going to listen to your intuition and then we're going to do that. And people are going to be like, I don't get it. Right. <laughs> people say, you know, when we deal in very conceptual things, especially spiritual things or healing things or energy things or um, all those kind of things, a lot of people just don't understand the words that we put behind it. But when we put an action behind it, OK, we'll do this every day and that will help you understand what I do. And so I find when people play my game, they understand me. They know that whether or not they want to hire me to work with me because that's what we're going to do in everything we do. And so this is really a model, a, a game as a, as a business model, as opposed to just a game or a product that we're going to add into the business. Wow, that is so fascinating. And you mentioned before, um, when you were talking about Laura, you mentioned uh, licensed and you mentioned to me before how it's important to use a proven system when you're creating a game or cards or, or use a licensed format already. Do you want to address that with us a little bit? Yeah, you know, I like making things easier, <laughs> right? I, I like when you introduce me, one of the things you said that she's an accountant. It's true, all this creativity and accounting, because I know that people really in the in this world can't just live in the dream world. They need to have a plan and actually make money doing what they want to do <laughs> and doing what they love to do. And so when we start to look at making things easy inside of games and decks, the, the, the first entry level, a lot of people, you know, honestly, I think everyone should have a deck in their business because they're easy to produce. That You can print one if you want. <laughs> and you can play with them very simply, kind of Oracle style or teaching style or any one of those things. So decks are an incredibly cool way to, you know, put your toe into the game world. <laughs> and they they don't require a lot of testing or figuring out or does this work that kind of thing games on the other hand are a little more complicated and so i invented the angel peacock and butterfly game and then i licensed its format as a a game format and the reason i do that is is just what you said is it, it makes it easier and we don't have to test as much because it's already a tested game and one of the things that happens inside of games, especially people who invent something and are very creative, there are things that need to be tweaked once it actually gets to playability. And so having a game that has already testing done makes it go faster. <laughs> and so then we can make games that um, get into the world in a, in a quicker way. I did help um, a lady named Roseanne Jansen. She's a spiritual um, guru. <laughs> she created a game called Expanding Consciousness. It is a board game that, I, honestly, I don't know how it works. She's the expert, but we helped create a board game where you move around the board and when you do it, you actually expand your consciousness. I don't know how it works, but it does. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those things like, whoa, I'm, I'm enlightened now. Not quite that, but, <laughs> but it's, that it, it's the mechanics of the game then that, that requires kind of this, this, uh, accounting mind <laughs> to, to make sure that it's actually working the way that you want it to work or envisioned it to work. And so games are a fun way to not only have people understand what you do, but then also walk through a process. Yes, I was thinking you have the process down from what I hear. So one of I, my... I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> can I do I get to ask you a question? <laughs> sure, you can ask me a question. Do you like to play games? I mean, do you have any board games or card games that your family has played or anything like that? Are there games in a game that you like? Yes, I grew up playing cards, I, you know, mainly cards, not really big into board games, but I played board games with my children. Oh, sure. And then I created them. I taught a summer school class called Digging Dinosaurs, Archaeology for Children. And I had taken all kinds of old board games and put dinosaur stickers on them. All my students played games. So 
in the classroom, I was probably what you would call a game player. <laughs> It sounds like that's awesome. See, I find most people who are teachers definitely have a game in them somewhere. <laughs> oh, I had <laughs> dinosaur games. Every every one of my boys' board games turned into dinosaur games. You know, the candy was covered up on Candyland. And <laughs> they were dinosaurs. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because, you know, in the end, we know for kids, games bring people together, right? They they have you have this feeling that we're all doing something together. And so that's also good for business when you bring people together. You know, some of the people that I work with on games, their main goal is is kind of a teamwork piece. They want people to come together and, and work together. Other people are looking for a way to get wins. You know, like how do I, like people who have salespeople or things like that, they want their salespeople to win. And so then we create games for them that are both interactive and gives them a win because they like wins. <laughs> That's interesting, sure. So um, Jean, you said to me once that everyone should have their own personal card deck. Do you wanna address that for our audience? Absolutely. You know, there, there, there's a little distinction here. So a personal card deck is one that is for you. It is a personal game that you create for yourself that you make all the rules for, which is really a fun way to play cards <laughs> because you get to decide. And what I love about personal card decks is you can decide, well, what do I want more fun around? You know, when we have businesses and lives and everything else, sometimes there's things that we're to do that actually we don't enjoy <laughs> and we, we don't want to do them. I'm not a huge fan of marketing inside of my business. I also don't like to exercise in my regular life. I, there, are, there are certain things that I'm like, oh, this could be way more fun. And so I have made card decks for those tasks. And so I made one for my marketing tasks. Now I went through them. I didn't just pick random marketing things. I picked things that I could do, had done and lit me up. You know, I'm still not gonna do things that don't light me up, but it doesn't mean I get to them, right? And then I would add some wild cards in there of things like no marketing today, go play. <laughs> and so I made a whole deck of different things that were different kind of marketing tasks that I could enjoy if I got to them. <laughs> and the days that I set aside for marketing, then I would shuffle that deck. I would pull out a card and I would say, ooh, go for a walk, right? <laughs> I don't have to market today, but I might get write an email, you know, something like that. And then because it's my game, I make the rule that if I draw a card, I have to do what's on it. So now wow. I have to set my timer for 15 minutes and for 15 minutes, I need to do that thing. And so that is the rule of that game. <laughs> and that holds you accountable. It does, it does. That is my game for that. I've also made decks around all kinds of other things. I have a deck for um, personal self-care. So those days where you're like, oh, I'm tired. It, do your people know the water <laughs> piece? But no, okay, so if I get to a space where I'm like, I need self-care. Sometimes I'm so much at a point that I don't even know what to do. I'm tired. I just want to eat chips, but that's probably not good for me, right? So I have a deck that I made that's all kinds of beautiful things. Let me see if I can grab it here. Where's my deck? Huh? I'm going to sit and look at my side as I try to find my deck. Let me say hi to Janet and Donna and Conceita. Thank you for coming in as well. I got it. I'm I got sorry it. I got it. if I missed you saying hi to you, but welcome in, welcome in. We're having fun with Jean Berry and Jean's back with a deck to show us. Here. I do. So this is a personal deck that I made for self-care. And so there, there are some beautiful ones like meditate. So meditation, um, find some essential oils, just sniff them because they smell good, right? Grounding, do something to get grounded. <laughs> Put your feet on the ground, feet in the grass, hug a tree, I don't know. What's this one? Oh, cocoon. That one I think of, you know, that I just need to wrap up in a blanket and sit by the fireplace. 
Cocoon. I like that yeah. description. Yeah. Sidewalk oracles. That's playing a fun game where you say, I need a sign. And the next unusual thing I see is my sign. And so that's sidewalk oracles. <laughs> I think I play that every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that's a fun game, isn't it? <laughs> um, joy, draw a card, an angel card or something. Water. I, you know, it could be drink water, could get, be get in water, whatever water means. You know, sometimes you just need more water. Get into nature. So you see, I, I created this really sweet personal deck. This is just for me. It's things that I do. Oh, here's another one. Talk to my mom. My mom collected owls and she has passed a, quite a few years ago, but <laughs> another one of those. So a personal deck is really one of those that makes any task more fun. And yes, I think everyone should have a personal deck. Yes, everyone should have a personal deck. I need a personal deck. Yes, you and, do. And so how about talking to everybody about how they could join you actually this month, new month that starts tomorrow. You've got something new, exciting coming I up. Will you do. talk to us about it? I would love to. I would love to. I am running a five-day creation quest for creating a personal Oracle deck. And so some people will in, inside of this Oracle um, quest will do ones just like I, I showed you. I drew those just on pieces of paper with a black pen. These ones I, I watercolor painted and they don't have to be incredibly fancy. These, this is my marketing deck, watercolor painting. Um, this deck I made just with paper and I put some stickers on the back. So they're all the same, they're kind of cute. Um, this was my exercise deck. And these ones were pretty simple. I just did, I wrote the words with just a little symbol. And so you can see, you know, those kind of things, do some yoga. And so inside of the quest, it is five days where I prompt people through, well, what do you want to get transformation on? We find their miracle archetypes, the little um, symbols and things like that, that align with each one of those things. And then we get to creating, it's like a professional play date. <laughs> we're going to create these really cool decks um, of I prompt you through 12 cards, but you can certainly make as many as you want. It's all set up on videos and online. And so people can do it at their own speed. We also have live Facebook stuff and the challenge and prizes every day, which is tons of fun. <laughs> and it's just really a fun professional play date. <laughs> Well, I certainly plan to be there and it starts Thursday, May 14th. And I shared your event post into my group. So they should or into onto the page and into the group. So they should be able to find it. But do you have a way you would like them to contact you if they have any questions? Because um, we're not having questions in our Facebook feed right now. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, of darn. course, you can send me, you can find me a messenger, you can send me a message there. You can also go to my Facebook page, Jean Berry Presents. That's a Facebook page, you can leave messages there. You can also send me emails at angel at jeanberrypresents.com. And so any one of those ways are easy, good ways to contact me. And I will answer your questions. <laughs> All right. Well, we have quite a few lovely souls on with us, but I don't see any questions yet, but I will keep my eye on them. Um, what other exciting projects or things do you have coming up that you might want to share with this community? Oh, thanks so much for asking. You know, I actually put on um, several creation quests a year. And I just finished one last month on um, re-energizing and monetizing books. Um, what I found, it was a dream journey of how to dream your book into existence, really, and take it to the next level. And um, we, we had some really cool things about people. You know, I think people who have books in them, everyone knows. They're like, oh, I have a book in me. And the people who, who have said that, but they haven't even picked up their pen to say, well, I don't know what it is. Inside of that quest, we had people saying, oh my God, I got the title. I know what I'm writing about. I know where I'm going. I, I got the outline inside of that. And so that was another five day creation quest we did on books. Um, I have a, a deck magic 
course, which is specifically for people who want to make a professional deck. That would be a deck that is going to be sold and be a heart of the business deck, right? One of those that allows people to scale and grow their business based upon the amazing transformation inside of it. <laughs> I know I'm also interested in that one. But right now, I just think that everybody should jump into your five day quest because we haven't even talked about how unbelievably low priced it is. It's true. It is true. It is just $33. And through tomorrow, if people register by the first, it is buy one, get one. And so you can bring your business bestie, your friends, your <laughs> colleagues, whoever you want, or your mom, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. If your mom is wanting to hang out with you more <laughs> and do something fun, that would be a great add on. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a great idea. What a great idea. Well, see, that's a very novel Mother's Day um, idea for, you know, bringing your mom to that. See, as a mom, if, if one of my kids said, hey, mom, you want to go to this? I'd be, oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure, especially now, <laughs> especially now when people are not going out in public. This is just one of those true. Mother's Day gifts you could really give for sure. Well, I just want to invite our audience one more time to leave any comments and I'll be forwarding them to Jean if we've already gone off the air and your questions come through, that's for sure. So uh, I want to thank you for being with us today, Jean, and, and I'll get to see you <laughs> often and I'll get to see you in the quest for sure. It'll be so much fun. And I would just like to encourage the Dars Divine Connections community to take a look at what Jean has and what's coming up and just plain fun. We need more fun in our lives, don't we? It, exactly. And th thanks so much for having me on. I, you know, I find kindred spirits are always about opening up what is possible and what what can we do that is something different to totally shift our worlds and so thank you so much for just it, so impromptu inviting me on and, and saying yes let's do this now <laughs> let's just do it do it for sure so as i mentioned earlier um this is new technology for me so excuse me why i kind of juggle around and see where we're at but thank you so much for coming on with me today Jean. thank you for having me okay so